Hey, I'm just going to give you a quick overview on how to put in a Generac 30 amp home link manual transfer switch. They do also have a 50 amp version. I put in a 30 amp. This is also upgradable to an automatic if you like. So here's our transfer panel or transfer switch. This is our main breaker panel. Obviously, it's going to be a different setup for everybody else. Um, I'm going to break this back down, show exactly how I did it. I've seen several YouTube videos where things were clearly wired wrong. I'm not an electrician, um, but I have a fairly good understanding, and I'm going to show you the way I did it. I'm sure there'll be plenty of comments on what's actually the most correct way to do this. So let's get this broken down. Okay, here we are all broken down. Here's our 30 amp transfer switch. This is my main breaker panel. This is a 30 amp. They do make a 50 amp. It, this came in a kit where it came with the 10 foot cable to run from my generator to my inlet box as well as the inlet box. What you're gonna have to purchase on top of that is your main cable that's running from the transfer switch to your inlet box, which uh, has to be at least 10-3. I personally ran 8-3 as it's a little bit longer run. The bigger cable allows for a little less resistance. It's better for a longer run, but a 10-3 is a minimum. And you'll also need a 50 amp circuit breaker that goes into your main panel that's gonna feed over to your transfer switch. So once you get your box mounted, the very first wire before you run anything else needs to be your ground. So you're gonna run your ground over and you're gonna pop it on your ground bus. Now in my case, this is acting as a sub panel. So my neutral and my ground are separate. You're gonna hear a lot of different videos where people are talking about just throw it onto your ground, your neutral. It does matter if they are separated like it is in my case. So once you've got that run, then what I did next was running in my inlet from my outlet box. Or sorry, from my inlet box. So you're gonna run that guy in, and in my case, like I mentioned, I did run a an 8-3 with the ground. So I've got my hots, so I got my black and my red, and then I got my white neutral. All three of those conductors, you land right here on the bottom part. Now, then running from your breaker panel, which is gonna run your power back over to your transfer switch. You're gonna wire in your, your black and your red on your 50 amp breaker. Those guys are gonna jump over here through your conduit and you're gonna run right up onto the top side. And then you're also gonna take your white neutral, you're gonna run it through and you're gonna drop it onto your neutral bar. So once you've got that run, then you've got to isolate and decide exactly which breakers you're going to want in your house, which lines or circuits you're going to want running off of your generator. And then you're going to isolate the black and the white. So you're going to run the hot and the neutral. You have to separate those out of your main breaker panel. So let's say, for instance, on this 20 amp breaker here, what I would do is I'm going to remove this black, this hot, and it's associated neutral. So you're probably gonna have to run back down to wherever they're popping into your box and make sure you grab the neutral as well as the black for each circuit that you're wanting to run. So you're gonna separate, separate those outside of your, your box. And then what I personally did is I upgraded my circuits, my breakers. I wanted them all 20 amp. It comes with a 30 amp double pull, a 20 amp single, and the rest are 15 amps. I needed 20 amp on all of mine, so I got some Eaton 20 amp breakers and I replaced them all. The catch with that is, is you're gonna have to replace all of your THHN cables that are 14 gauge that it comes with. So the 30 amp double pull breaker, this includes some 10 gauge THHN wire, your 20 amp, 12 gauge, and the 15 amps come with 14 gauge. 
since I upgraded to all 20 amp, I've got to upgrade all my my cables as well. So I first thing I did was I ran all eight of my neutrals. I had to upgrade all of them essentially up to a 12 gauge THHN wire. So you run each one of those off of the neutral bar that's sitting right back into here. And you run each one individually up to each individual circuit. So you have to separate all those neutrals from these circuits from your main neutral buses. Otherwise, when you have your transfer switch running and your generator's going, if you don't have those separated and you tie all those into your main neutral panel over here, you could essentially back feed into your home. So in order to make this completely independent when it's running on the generator, each individual neutral must be run directly over to the associated neutral line coming in on each circuit. So once I ran all of those, then the next easy spot is running over your all of your main hots over to your each individual circuit over here. So again, since I upgraded to 20 amps, I had to upgrade to 12 gauge wire. So from each one I took, so starting from right here, this one runs over to my fridge. So I took a 12 gauge wire and ran it all the way through, through my conduit, running it up, and I tie it right into that main circuit. So for instance, right here, you see I've got two blacks together. One is running down and over to this circuit. The other one is actually running up and into the fridge into the house. Same thing with each individual neutral. Got this neutral, there's two lines, two whites tied together right here. One is running up into the fridge. The other white neutral is running down through the conduit, popping onto that neutral bar. So, now as far as the grounds go, you've got all your grounds coming into your main panel from on each line or each individual circuit. Those, they can just remain right onto your ground bar in your main panel. The only thing you need to swap over is each individual neutral and each individual hot for each line. That's the most important part. Is I've seen tons of YouTube videos where somebody just takes all of those white neutrals, they run them over and they just tag them into the neutral bus. Makes absolutely no sense and is completely wrong. So, long and short of it, you've got your 50 amp breaker for your main panel. That is sending power over, jumping up, right up into here on those top two lugs. You've got your neutral coming off of your neutral bar in your main panel. That's feeding over, popping up right here. Then, from your generator or your, your inlet box outside, you're gonna run 10-3 or 8-3. You're gonna run that in, it's gonna drop into your transfer switch. Then you got your three conductors, you got your, your hots, you got your black and your red, those are gonna drop right down here. Then you've got your neutral coming, it's gonna pop right here. And you're gonna tie your ground into the back, there's a little ground bar back here. You're going to take off of your neutral bar inside the transfer switch, tie into all the neutrals over here in your main panel, and then you're going to run each one of your, your blacks or your hots, you're going to run them over and tie them into your circuit. Your 50 amp breaker, when that's on, that's going to run the power over here, it's going to feed all those circuits in your house like nothing's going on. Now, when the power goes out and you turn your generator on, there's a little switch on the front of your panel and once the generator light turns on and it's getting power then it will allow you to toggle it over and that's going to take and kill these guys right here including that neutral and it is now going to function completely independent off of those hots and that neutral coming in from your generator then each one of these circuits will become live off of the generator. It's going to feed over into here and be completely independent of your breaker box. Outside of your grounds, if it needs to be used, those guys are going to run out to your main ground outside. But otherwise, when you're on your generator and you have it wired correctly, it's going to be a complete 
an independent system. All right, I hope you found this video helpful. Again, the most important thing that I want to stress that is different than what you're going to see in a lot of different videos and explanations is make sure that you have all of your neutrals wired independently off of your main neutral buses inside of your breaker panel. It's very important so that when your generator is running and the switch is operational off of the generator that all those neutrals are separated from your home as well as that separates it from the main lines outside so you don't accidentally backfeed power back to your your power lines outside and there's linemen working and they think it's dead you may actually send power from your generator back if you have these whites tied into your neutral feel free to leave any comments if you got any questions you probably should be looking for an electrician otherwise let's get this guy closed back up